Guys, it says assume the lines that look like parallel are. Normally, we don't make assumptions that we can't prove by geometry or algebra. But in this case, since it says assume, it's kind of the same as saying they're parallel. From there, we need to decide what kind of angles those are, set up a relationship, and then solve like we always do. So what kind of angles are those two? Pick it up, please. Like, I thought I was teaching high school. What kind of angles are those? Yeah. Alternate interior, and tell me about the, what's true about them? They're congruent. So we're just going to set them equal. Okay. We're done with geometry for the moment, then what? It's a quadratic. First thing you need to identify. Then how do we solve quadratics? Yeah, then. Set equal to zero. Okay. Guys, here's the thing that it seems to be confusing people, so I'm going to hopefully help you with that. When we say set equal to zero, I don't want to see this. Like, we don't just set this thing equal to zero, because is this a true statement? No. Is that geometry true? No, it's not. And that hopefully that will get better, but that's happening still. And so instead, we're going to subtract 14x and 21 from both sides. And there are no like terms to combine. So... We just basically write everything out. From here, what do we need to do next? Solve. Well, yes, yeah, solve, but specifically. Good. How many of you notice it has a common a GCF of 7? Good. If you didn't see that, would it mess it up? Did anybody not do it? I oh. Well, let's see if you get the same thing. Alright, so we pull the 7 out front, and then we get x squared minus 2x minus 3. What do we do now? Because we have this 7 stuck out front. I mean, that's okay, but what can we do with it, Diego? You divide by 7? Awesome, yeah. Divide by 7 on both sides, so that basically it goes away. And now we're... We're factoring, we're ready to star this. So, or if you don't need star, you don't have to do it, but it seems to be helping a lot of you. So one, or A times C is negative three, B is negative two, A is one. So we need factors of negative three that add up to positive, or negative two. So factors of negative three, there's only two of them, right? One and three. Which one needs to be negative? Three. Those become our two factors. Oh, I just have so And this is still equal to zero. Don't forget to leave it equal to zero. Okay, and then a lot of you are getting to the point where you can look at that line and tell me what x is. Without having to set it up, I mean. Like, uh, normally, you would write it out here, but some of you are just looking at this and telling me x is what? 3 and one. negative 1. So are we done? No. That's an algebraic solution, and we need to go make sure it works geometrically, right? Um, some people have asked me, what's the best way to check? So here's my, my advice. And if, you're, if you have this on your warm-up, you should write it down. The best way to check. It's not the only way, but it is the best way. Plug in the negative. If there is one, plug in the negative x. If you have it, to the non squared 
expression. Why would I say it's plug that into the non squared expression? Yeah. Because if you plug it into the squared, it will become positive? Yeah. If we square anything, it becomes positive. So you're not really checking to see if it works in the geometry. So plug it into the non squared one. And if it makes the angle or the segment length or whichever you're dealing with, if it makes that negative, then kick it out. <coughs> so back up here, if I plug 14 or negative 1 times 14 plus 21, we still get 7. Is 7 degrees okay for that angle? Yeah. Can you guys stop? Please, thank you. 7 degrees is fine. It's not negative. I mean, it may seem too small based on the picture, but that's not one of our criteria. Of course, if we plug negative 1 over here, it's also fine. So x is actually both factors. Um, I'm going to move this. So x is negative 1, and x is negative 3. Actually, 3. Sometimes both work. That happened... I think it was number two, maybe, on your last quiz. Okay. So how'd you do? How many of you got it? How many of you got both answers for that? Okay. Probably need more of you on board with that. So make sure to ask questions if you're stuck. All right, grab your packet, please. So on the back of page one, let's start with number four. So just start with your given, but with your given you should go mark the picture as well. So in the picture it tells us G and H are parallel, and they're supposed to be aligned. Yeah, and like G isn't showing up on here. Somewhere like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so those are parallel. And angles 1 and 5 are congruent. Okay. And our goal, always read your goal before you start your plan. We're trying to prove 5 and 3 are congruent. Is there only one way to do that? No. No? So your way may not be the same as we do this, and it could still be right. So we'll have to talk about options after we do at least one version. So how can we link... Like, before we even write, we should kind of have our proof planned out. How can we link 5 to 3? Yeah, go ahead, Porter. Angle 1? Yeah, but how? Like, tell me how. Um, it's because if angle 1 and 5 are congruent, then... Um, angle 1 and 3 are congruent because of alternate uh, exterior angles up here. Uh, 1 and 3 are corresponding. Oh. But we do have, well, let's get in that, into that in a second. So, do you guys see what I'm saying? 5 to 1 to 3? Because 1 and 3 are corresponding. Is it okay to say that 1 and 3 are congruent because they're corresponding, or do we have to do it a different way? Meaning, do we know enough information to say that they are indeed congruent? Yeah, because we were told the lines are parallel. So we can also mark that one. And since we have marks on all three, it's basically just substitution or transitive. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 by the corresponding angle theorem. Now we've said 1 is 5, and 1 is 3, so we are already able to say that 5 is 3. Probably, it doesn't matter, like, don't sweat it if you say transitive and it should be substitution, or vice versa. I'm not going to knock you for that. Do try to get it, though. This one, two things are congruent to the same thing, so they're congruent to each other. I kind of think of it like a triangle. Sort of, okay. How'd that one go? I got confused on six. Alright, we'll do six. 
But let's talk other options. Are there any other ways to do this or not? Let me ask you a couple questions. What kind of angles are 6 and 4? 6 and 4. Outside. Alternating exterior angles. Right now. So people are saying alternate exterior angles. But I do hear some debate. Six and four are unrelated, aren't they? Yeah. Okay? They are not related. How about six and two? <coughs> what kind of angles are six and two? Alternate exterior. They are alternate exterior, but do we know they're congruent? No. No, why not? Yeah, we were not told anything about these two lines, and so we can't say 6 and 2 are congruent. Those are not necessarily parallel. Good. All right. How about 5? How did it go? Do you want to do 5 or just me? Yeah? Okay. We don't really have a marking for supplementary angles, so we kind of just have to keep it in mind. But we can mark G and H as parallel, that's okay. So remember arrows mark parallel. So our goal is to prove 6 and 2 are congruent. We need to find a link between uh, 6 you to 2. Huh? You have done three. I know, that's because that was what was given. Oh. That's okay. So 6 needs to get over here to 2. Right now all we know is 6 and 3. So tell me how we can link up from 6 to 2. I said angle 3 plus angle 2 equals 180. Okay. Did you do it like this? Like that? Yeah. Okay. So you guys, she's writing it as an equation with measures and equals. What allows us to do that? For two and three specifically, what allows us to do that? <coughs> no? Good try. They're not congruent. They're supplementary. You're close. S, S. What kind of angles are those? It's S S I A P, right? Yep. So same side interior angles postulate tells us two and three. And it's okay to say that because we know G and H are parallel. Otherwise we couldn't say that. Okay, but where did that get us? So now we have 3 and 2. 2 finally shows up in our proof. So we have 6, 3, and 2. What else? Go ahead, Porter. Um, the fact that angle 3 plus angle 6 is equal to angle 3. Okay, so before we say that, you guys, we need to... This one... Uh, angle 6 plus angle 3 are supplementary. That's a geometric definition. It's geometry world, right? So we actually need to write that like this second line looks. So measure of angle 6 plus measure of angle 3 equals 180. And that's how do you switch from geometry to algebra and back and forth? Definition. Definitions, good. So definition of supplementary angles. And... Now we're in the same form, so what Porter said is, that's a good next step. They both equal 180, so we can set them equal to each other, which is kind of a long line, a line of work, but, okay? And that's just substitution or transitive. So they both equaled 180, so we can set them equal to each other. Again, a transitive is fine. Probably actually better, but we'll leave it as substitution.
Okay, our goal is to prove 6 and 2 are congruent. So what do we want to get out of this, like get rid of in this equation that we wrote? Angle 3, right. So measure of angle 2 equals measure of angle 6. And how did we do that? Like what property? Hello? She is? Guys, if you think about this like a, just an algebraic equation, all we did was subtract the 3 off, right? So this is an algebraic property, subtraction property of equality. Okay, but that's, it's really close to what we're asked to prove, but it isn't what we're asked to prove. So how do we get it from that version to the, the one that we're asked to do? Yeah. This is the algebraic version, and we need the geometry version to finish this off. So, angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, <coughs> and that's the definition of congruent angle. So we had to do some switching back and forth in that one. There was a way to do it with, sort of without having to do that, but... It's not as good of a proof. This is a better way. Good. Did anybody get close or get it? Okay. You guys got it all the way? One more? Okay. Got close. Good. All right. Last one. Somebody asked about six. Was it you? Okay. Notice that I've drawn the picture with the lines extended. Why do you think that is? Why do you think I did that? Yeah. Yeah. Just like on Tuesday, we talked about covering stuff up to help you see things better. It's also really helpful to extend lines when they're not drawn the whole way across. Because now I think it's super easy to see that 1 and 3 are what kind of angles? Alternate interior. Alternate interior, good. Okay, and we know we were told that these two lines are parallel. And what else were we told? Two and one. Are two and one congruent normally? Like, should they be? No. No. Definitely mark that. <coughs> and then we can mark one and three because of the alternate interior angles. So I would go there next. Okay, we're, we're asked to prove 2 and 3 are congruent, so really, we're kind of there already. Right. One, 2 is 1, 1 is 3, so 2 has to be 3, and that's transitive or substitution. So that's a short one. You like those kind? On that one? Is it it's because of the picture? Yeah. Yep. So take take a pencil and get a ruler or just use the edge of your calculator and extend those lines. It will help a lot. Alright, I want you to try one that I have. And <coughs> let's go find it. It's one with numbers, this one. Give that one a shot. Give you a little bit of time to work on it. If you don't put statements and reasons, do you get full points? No. Okay. No, you wouldn't. I know that seems like a petty detail, but it is important. Guys, here's the idea behind this one. You have two, two ways. You could go one and two are, if you notice, the numbers add up to 180, so they're supplementary. And they are a type of angle that should be supplementary, which is called what? Same side exterior. 
So the short way of doing this one would be measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 equals 180. All we did there was add them up. That's all. So this is the addition postulate, or sorry, addition property of equality. That's all we did was add them up. Then we say angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. And how do we do that? Or what's the reason? Definition. Definition. Of That's all we did was define it. So definition of supplementary angles. So we have now shown that two angles that should be supplementary are in fact supplementary. And so that proves J and K are parallel by the converse. Remember to look at the bottom of your reference page. Which one? SSEAP. Those are exterior angles. Good. That's the shorter version. But why is that 3 sitting there? If we could do it that way, what, why do we need the 3? <laughs> yeah. Can, can we do this with the 3 somehow? Yeah. yeah. Good. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way to do that one is a little bit longer, but we need to say 2 and 3 are what kind of angles? That's what we need to bring in for that one. That's a linear pair. So measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 equals 180. That's a linear pair. You cannot, listen carefully, you cannot say this. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 by cat. Or any version of that. Why can we not say that? We do not know that those two lines are, are parallel, right? J and K. We don't know that. So if you use that, you're assuming something that's not true. And then let's think of better words to say there, Jacob. Use your little boy word. That would be better. All right. Ah, shucks. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> ah, shucks. So, instead, we need to make a link between 1 and 3 by go going the um, supplementary route. So we still need this line, just like we said before. Basically adding the 2 together. So 1 plus 2 equals 180. We already have that. That was addition property. Then, both of these equal 180. So we kind of saw that on one that we did on the packet. So measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 equals measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2. And you could call that substitution or transitive. Then we subtract the 2's off. And we're here. By subtraction, you'll see that combination. Notice this is the second time, even just today, we've seen substitution and then subtraction. So subtraction property. And then we're ready, uh, now that we've shown this, to say that those are parallel. Why? What is this the converse of? Yeah. Converse of cat. Okay. Remember to prove lines parallel, your last line should say converse. Otherwise, you didn't do it. Okay? How'd you do? Great. Uh, we'll spend the rest of the time finishing up the packet. So, unless we all finish it, then we can check and practice some more. Is this also Whoa. So go to seven. I don't know why mine's not showing up, but weird. Shh. on seven again. I don't want you to just say, "Hey, those 
Lines are parallel, so the angles are supplementary. Don't do that. Follow a pathway connecting other pieces. In other words, prove the same side exterior angles postulate. Okay, number eight. You need to add an A right here. Otherwise, that one's kind of weird because it doesn't have an A. Okay, number... Go to the back page. We, we did nine together. Yep, we did nine together. This one talks about lines N and M, and then it doesn't have them. So N and M. Make sure to label those. And then number 11. Looks like G got cut off. I don't know if yours looks like that. But. Okay, that's all. Keep going.